All right. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everybody who's joined us and everybody who's going to watch this afterwards. Um, welcome to another one of uh, WISE's webinar series. We are going to hang out today. Um, we're going to spend an hour or so, and we're doing it a little bit differently today. Rather than having a mad crazy panel, I'm, on, I'm just going to hang out and geek out with, with Chris. Um, uh, Chris Nickerson needs no introduction. For those of you that maybe do, go Google him, or I'm going to let him speak in a second. But please this is one of those conversations or one of those webinars where hopefully you listen to it play and record it again with that i'm going to shut up and i'm going to let chris introduce himself and say hi and introduce lara's and all the other good oh, stuff always always far too kind um and far too generous i'm just another humble security servant um <laughs> and i've been been around for long enough to see us uh, see us succeed and fail over and over again usually doing the same exact thing over and over again uh, but uh, about 25 years in the security industry, uh, you know, running large uh, organizations, security companies, uh, being part of internal security teams at Sprint, uh, taking in an, an unfortunate, I guess for me, uh, stint in one of the uh, big four auditors to, to learn about the macro world of global audit. Uh, then worked in a large distributor running a few thousand engineers doing services and about 14 years ago, really honed in and focused on what we wanted to bring to the security market uh, at Lara's with my partner, Eric Smith. Uh, and, and really it was about kind of bringing experience forward. You know, I, I, I always say that this genesis that, that we have in the offensive security market is this, you know, bad t-shirt that we see where it's, you know, there's no patch for human stupidity. And, and I, I, I just disagree The the patch is experience. And when we look at security we can we can get all the metrics in the world we can have all the pretty graphs we can have the red yellow green but at the end of the day until you experience it you really really never get that patch and so what we set out to do at lara is through all of our offensive services whether it's in the app world and the pen testing world and social and physical red teaming etc is really to be there as an adversary to be a level of experience and then to collaborate with our with our peers that we're working with to truly say, OK, what did we get out of that experience? How could we as a team do better? How can you as a team do better? Go back at it and eventually make that sparring activity not not something that we're, we're hesitant of, but something that we look forward to. Um, and over the last 14 years, we've been blessed with having clients and partners and friends and associates like you, Chris. That, that we've been able to go at that sparring game. And every year it takes us you know, a little bit more effort. And because it takes us more effort, that's more friction that they, they pose out there to the people that are attacking them. And, and, and that's really what we gauge ourselves on succeeding is commitment, that pressure, that kind of constant pressure that creates diamonds and, and the ability to collaborate together. So you hit a couple of things on that one, which I think, so many in the industry are missing. Um, and this is the, the whole thing for me. This is, and we talk about offensive security, and it goes into two pathways, and we're going to hit both pathways. And I kind of did it on the LinkedIn stuff. You know, we had one with the axe out there chasing down, and we had one with, you know, the rather large snacked up um, red teamer. Let's start with the red teaming side, the offensive side, the side that people seem to want to come into this industry and do. It's like, oh, I want to grab my red spandex, jump off of tall buildings, and break into shit. Where's your head on that nowadays in this industry? I want your thoughts on that. You know, um, I think I think from from an industry perspective, it's it's uh, it's nice to see that there is such a level of interest in it. Uh, I think that there's also, from maybe a scientific perspective, um, a rush of people with calculators who don't know how to do math trying to jump into the fight of solving the world's hardest equation because they have a TI-85 and they know how to push buttons. Like it's, it, it, really, it really is a challenge when you know, you're trying to explain the basic tenets or fundamentals of an operating system or protocols or networking with somebody who's you know, used to mashing buttons inside of some framework. Um, so, so while I appreciate the enthusiasm, um, for for kind of getting into the industry, I think we might do a little bit good of understanding that we're a bit more of a blacksmithing industry where we got to kind of work our way up. Um, otherwise, we build a whole bunch of knives that break. And and you know, I, I always 
I always find myself in like the middle of the night watching that, you know, forged in fire knife making show and thinking yeah. about our industry and the amount of people that just like jump in and their knives are super oh. fragile, even though they look pretty. Yeah. But but, you know, at the end of the day, because it wasn't work hardened right, because all of those little tiny things didn't really come together, I think that sometimes the the exposition of some of these you know vulnerabilities or threats or ex, you know exposures exploits whatever uh end up creating so much debt in an organization that we're doing a lot more harm than we are good so i think in order for us to really be effective you have to be able to say that every single time i'm going to throw a punch or every time i'm going to use an exploit or every time i'm going to talk about a single concept I have to have some level of understanding of what the counterpoint is. And, and I think that if, if you can do that and you can effectively say, hey, I'm using this thing, but I know that you could detect it this way, you could protect it this way, you can get a more rapid response this way. I think that level of balance is something that we need that we're currently lacking because people are piling on to like, oh, this looks cool, go break stuff. And then they're like, fix it. And they're like, oh, I don't do that. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's again too much of that. I've seen too much of that. This is, I think, this is where some of the frustration comes in nowadays. And I mean, you've coined it, and a number of other folks in the industry are using it, which is the whole concept of collaborative. So you move it from I'm going to come in and break something, which is also adversarial as well. You know, to me, it's like, ah, oh, I mean, I, I've always had this conversation with people. I'm going like, to come in and penetrate you. I'm like, what the f are you going to do to me? Excuse like me. <laughs> No, I'm not sure I really want that. <laughs> not yeah, good. Not in the physical, definitely not in the digital world. <laughs> um, and you're like, okay, how about I come in and we have a conversation? How about we talk about things? How about we discuss? How about we collaborate together? And I mean, you move it from that offensive, literally offensive in some ways, to something much more collaborative, the purple teaming concept, the idea of literally yeah. sitting down and working together. You guys, I mean, the team you have around you is being amazing. No two ways about it. You've got some crazy brain trust in and around you. I agree. And they scare me. Like I, I have no idea what to do with most of them. Amazing. I love them. <laughs> and you just bring them to the table, and they're like, "Well, yes, we can pull this and this and this, and we've got this. And here's how we could get into you now. What are you going to do? How are you going to do? How are you going to look at it? Why aren't more companies doing this? What, what the heck?" is it that's stopping that more collaborative way of doing things i'm 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 wondering if it's our fault like maybe like specifically like me and you and other people like if it's our fault that we we got people so accustomed to seeing bad and going oh well at least they found the bad versus somebody else that maybe we need to kind of retrain them maybe we need to kind of get away from offensive security like offending people with security and we need to we need to really kind of like wrap that back into you know even even something as simple as as performance engineering or iterative testing or ways that we can stop this idea of security as this big you know nebulous bubble i mean granted I, i'll tell you i like i wear the the atlas sh shrugged holding the globe on my back all the time for the number of times that in the beginning of of our industry we said look at least i'm finding it and and so i could i can like take some of that personal responsibility i think that that message grew too loudly and i think that we started to be a become accustomed to the negative without presenting the positive and i think that one of those big shifts one of those kind of like flips in ethos i think that we need to start creating um, and, and, and I think that this is this is the genesis of what we're talking about is that sh prove to me the positive. Don't don't prove the negative anymore. I mean, in yeah. order for you to posit a negative, you must come with a resolution or come with a positive to balance it out. And and then this way, instead of, you know, I mean, uh, imagine the, the the idea of a vulnerability scanner being able to show you all of the bad things in context of all the good stuff that it fixed which yeah ps it doesn't do that <laughs> but but you know as, as a human based process right now we we can put a line in the sand to say i will not give you anything that you cannot do something about 
because by me giving that to you, it just causes undue concern that I, I mean, you legitimately can't solve. So why not, why not focus on the things that are solvable, whether that's technology solvable, whether it's a tweak, whether it's a human process, whatever. So then we're always kind of ending to some piece of finality opposed to, you know, just this nebulous, like throw it over the fence, like deal with all these red things. And then next time I'm going to use completely different stuff P.S. It exists today, but I'm just going to use it next time because this time I just happened to not use it because the easy way was was one route. Yeah, it's um, I just went through one of those. Uh, I'm like, I, I could have done the same stuff I did last year because you haven't fixed any of it. But let's sit down and have that conversation. That's just like, oh, you're very. The other part that goes into that, I think, is uh, Evan Evan um, Evan Frankel um, also does something similar. It's the accountability. To me, it also comes down to our accountability as well. It's like to you, yeah. I mean, we did it. I'm, I'm, I'll stick my hand up and go, I was there. Number one, I think I blamed everybody, including my grandmother, for for breaking shit on the internet. I as blamed your grandmother. Us, <laughs> she was a good blame it's target. That as well. I was like, yeah, why would you give this to my? Yeah, no, don't don't do those things. What I want to, do, what I also want that accountability. To your point, rather than going, hey, here's your red team test and chuck it to a fence, like unfortunately, so many, so many companies still do. I want that. I think to your point, it's that level of accountability. If I'm going to point out your flaws, I should at least help you understand how to do some remediation and stuff. Now, counterpoint to this one, which is, which also goes into where things get ridiculously complicated. Years ago you rallied a team of folks like an amazing team of folks to put up the p test ptes stuff which is still out there it's still fantastic i still reference it every now and again for crying out loud but what seems to have happened is we've gone from having a couple of nice simple easy well put together frameworks to more bloody frameworks than, than, than we know what the hell i was on a call the other day and the, the, a bunch of um, educators like oh we'll build a framework why shit's already out there use one of theirs or improve upon it and so we use it Again, what is it that that takes something fairly simple and the P-test stuff and goes, well, we're going to make six other frameworks out of the damn thing? How do we stop that from happening and how do we make that? Oh, man, I mean, that's like saying, how do you stop salespeople from, from chasing ambulances? I mean, it, it takes I don't, it's that I don't easy. Know. I, can, I have no yeah, problem. I mean, yeah, that. blackjacks, <laughs> like, like those little spikes that you throw in the road. Yeah, um, oh, those are good. You know, I, I, I think in the beginning of, of P-Test, so, so for context to think about it, that was in 2008 and nine, Yeah. right? Um, yeah. And, 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 the, and the reason that we, we really truly sat together to do it was we, we understood, right? Like, the, like completely taken to heart the article that Schneier wrote about security being a lemon market, right? Then of course, going and reading Ackerlof and Schiller's, you know, the, the, the lemon market principles and going like, oh yeah, there's a complete asymmetry between the level of knowledge of the buyer and the level of knowledge of the seller. And the seller just knows all this stuff and the buyer just goes, well, I mean, hopefully they're not lying to me. So we, we said, look, we need to put something out as a standard to try and level the playing field, right? To try and collateralize something that someone else could look up where, you know, I might not know everything about cars, but if I could look up these general things, I could tell you whether it seems like the things that you're gonna do are, are in line with what I want or not. I think I think that was, you know, our, our first attempt. I, I don't know because of the grassroots effort of it, because of, you know, the time and all of those things, right? I think standards need curation, they need marketing, they need, you know, capital and those things, which were stuff that we didn't have, but but it still kind of took off because there wasn't anything else to supplicate it, and there still isn't today. And so I think that that's, that's an effort that could be used from an open source perspective, um, much more like we have kind of creative commons and, and those types of tenants. I, I think that those things could be used. I think that the other piece of it is we have to retrain people on their expectations. Um, and, and if we can start maybe setting expectations that if your pen test or your red team or whatever thing you want to call it ends up in trackable net positive improvement, you did a good job. If not, if you end up with a sheet as a whole bunch of red and then 1500 Jira tickets open, it failed. And, right. and I think that, that part of that retraining of those muscles 
it is a conversation that I find myself having more and more and more lately, which is the evolution of a security program beyond vulnerability management is tactical, right? Yeah. And, and, and there is such a struggle. It is like a more, like a deep, moral, personal, emotional struggle of, well, show me what you did and then tell me how to fix it. And then, and, and that, and that works in the vulnerability world, but when you evolve past that and you evolve to finding tactics, you now have to go, this works and it's supposed to work that way. You just used it for bad. And it's, it's such a different conversation in the program that we now have to go, well, how do I work with something like that where it's not binary? I can't just go shut that thing off because it destroys my environment. I have to go, how do I find it? How do I find it at a high level of quality? And I think that those concepts are something that drive us towards performance engineering and drive us away from this red, yellow, green concept of security being a just a protection thing. I think it's a maturity, right? And like, like I, I wish that in the beginning, 20 plus 25 years ago, I wish I had sat down with really, really badass performance engineers and had them teach me their magic of how they do their job and me have the epiphany of like, oh, security is a performance game. It has nothing to do with blocking, has nothing to do with tackling. It's a Formula One match. Every single piece gives me a little bit of time. And the more time that I have, the better I am than my competition. And it's like this perfect analogy, piece for piece, player by player, driver, team, coach, money to Formula One. Which also means you hit the big four, as you said, that you worked for, which also means we need to get them out of the mindset of it's a tick in the box. <laughs> that's, that's right. I, that's that's a daily struggle for all of us. I mean, that's right. uh, I just need an assessment. What do you mean? What what do you actually need? Well, I've got this audit. Oh God, here we go. Okay, right. do you just want to tick in the box, or do you actually want to improve? Mm -hmm. So okay, I mean, Gabrielle just hit a question up on the other side of the fence. In your mind, and I want your thoughts on this one. We have taken the word red teaming, we've taken the word assessment, and unless I'm missing something, almost every single marketing company, and probably even a bunch of us as well, have gone to the point where we're like, well, hang on, how do we explain red team versus assessment versus penetrate versus scan versus whatever? I Give me your thoughts on that one, please. <laughs> say, <laughs> say, say more so that I can try and so it's more, absorb so it, that. It, so here's my thoughts on this, and I'll give you my thoughts on this one. If I'm going to come in and I'm doing an assessment, to me, I'm literally doing something to help you understand where you are, where you want to be, need to be, should be, and kind of how you're going to get there. Yep. And I'm going to do, I'm going to do light and fuzzy. I am not going to beat the crap out of you. I'm not going to drive the truck through the front door. I'm literally just going to go in and go at a high level. Here's all the shit you got to do, and here's yep. how we help you do that. That to me is an assessment. Mm -hmm. If I'm doing a penetration test. My job is to go in, plant a flag, and go, here's how I got in. And maybe here's a couple of different avenues. Here's a couple of different ways to got in. But here's my flag. I got in. Whether I got in or whether I tried, whatever I tried to do. Yep. <clears throat> to me, the red teaming side is almost taking that to the nth degree. It, it, it's starting to use much more refined tactics, mm -hmm. much more elevated, much more intuitive stuff, less, less I'm going to bring a tool and more I'm bringing a mindset and maybe a custom yeah. framework. And I'm just, I, I'm, I'm gonna do nasty things, but I'm gonna do it again. And I'm gonna help you understand what maybe somebody more advanced is thinking about. Yeah, yeah. To I, me, that's, that's, that's almost like the, that's almost the pinnacle. And honestly, 99 point something percent of companies, I'd argue, aren't ready for that yet. Cause you're always gonna get in. It's like, okay, let's just start off sitting having a conversation and then we'll do an assessment. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, the, 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 the karate metaphor kind of comes in or any type of fighting of like, you know, first you can read the book and, and see if this is something that you can even conceptualize. Uh, I think, as you said, if, we're, if you're going to be doing an assessment to understand, you know, what does the program look like? How, how does the program even operate? 
Um, and if and if we take it just from from a like what I consider kind of defensive controls, right? If I if I get that initial lay of the land, I get an understanding of what you have and what you don't have. Um, the purpose of my pen test, and 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 maybe this is a little bit uh, not as online as as people want. The purpose of a pen test, I, I see it, is to test the things that should be working. Yeah. Um, I I don't want to test your V12 motor when you have a V6 in the car, because mm -hmm. guess what? It's not going to perform like a V12. I'm just right. going to give you unrealistic expectations. And, and then my, my recommendations are unrealistic. So I, I think at the beginning, you know, being able to say, do my controls even work, right? Test of effectiveness, not even the test of design, test of designs that beginning piece, but, but a general pen test is test effectiveness. Do, do they work? And um, when I when I look at that in in a total in a program, I want to say, you know, the pen test is kind of your first shot of saying, you know, here and there, do these different pieces work? Are those artifacts doing something right now? Do are we seeing something? Is, there, is it tunable? Do we have blind spots? Right? It's kind of your first run. You're not you're not really going for lap time. You're going to make sure the car doesn't blow up. Yes, you blow and, up. Yeah, exactly. And I think and I think when you get to red teaming. You're now talking about uh, the difference between iterative testing, right? Can I iterate a few of these different things and get through to a full chain or cadence? And that chain and cadence is going to be for people that have already proven that their stuff works. So when you jump right to red teaming, it's like, well, I don't even know if my stuff works. And then if I'm going and I'm spending and look, let me just let me dispel it right off the bat. Um, if you don't know that you can definitely catch commodity tools, anything that's on GitHub, anything that's like, you know, you bought Metasploit, you bought, you know, Canvas, you bought Immunity, you bought Core, you bought whatever. If you don't know that you can't test it and catch it right now, don't buy a red team test. It's stupid. You're wasting your money because if I spend a month of my time building custom stuff and it walks right by your defenses that some commodity tool can walk by, you're just not ready for it yet. Like you have decided to choose Mike Tyson as your sparring partner versus choosing somebody who can actually bring you forward. And if you get knocked out too bad the first time, you don't wanna get back into the ring. So you need to take steps through this process to first prove that your tools are working, tailor fit it for your environment. And once you feel like I'm really confident that I can catch all these things because I've gone through all these iterations, then challenge somebody to try and get by me, right? But, but I think that this idea of, well, I just need to say red teaming because somebody said it once and, you know, it's the person next door to me got a red team, so I need to do that, um, is exactly what creates the fraud in our industry. And I say fraud very, 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 very directly is that the bulk of the companies that are out there that say that they do red teaming are total frauds. Don't total fraud. Like, yeah. and, and that's not to say, hey, come buy stuff for me. That's like just legit test anything that they do and see if they could do more than just like rip a couple scans or, you know, wait to like let them into their environment. And if their first actions are like run responder, grab SPNs, <laughs> crack the hashes and get DA, like kick them out and be like, you're a script kitty, you suck and I want my money back. This is a horrible test. Zero people ever do this. Like you're right. terrible at your job. Please go to some type of school. Oh, so fucking right. And it's no. just, and, and, but, but I think that your testing needs to be commensurate with your skill. I think we need to use elastic theory and think, okay, if I'm stretching this hard, I need to have the program that at least performs this much. And, and as it starts to expand, as the capability expands, then start to expand how the test is going to occur. And I think really the only way to do that in the beginning is to get a good fundamental understanding of can I iterate these different tactics in the environment and do I even have coverage to start with? Not, not even can I see it or can I stop it, but do I even have something in, in the place where I could maybe see it? Yeah. Something, so as you were talking, we were talking about hierarchy, you know, whether you go that way, that whatever way you want to go, depending upon. So here's something I don't think I've seen anywhere. And this is, I think Gabriel and I were kind of talking a bit behind the scenes. I don't think I've seen a maturity hierarchy on the assessment, on the offensive side of the world. 
unless I'm missing something. Because as we're talking, we start off with, you know, tabletop exercises maybe, we start off having the conversations, then we go to an assessment, or maybe the assessment's part of that, then maybe we'll go do a pen test. We'll go test what you think you've put in place. And then when you're ready for that, then we send in the red spandex at that point in time. And only when we send in the red spandex. And the only reason to send that in is because you're sitting there going, ha, come at me, I've got my shit together. Right. I, I don't think I've seen that hierarchy anywhere. I don't even think I've seen anybody talking about it in a way that businesses would understand. Am I wrong? Uh, no, no, you're not. Um, I, and, and, and so we had this conversation and, and I'll say that the conversation took maybe three or four bottles. That's, that's how we could measure time in it. It took three or four bottles to get through and not really come to any good consensus. But we did at one point uh, release a level of testing maturity for P tests, where yeah. it was a level one type test versus a level five type test. And, you know, the level five type test was go all out, physical, social, everything's included. You know, you're expected to write your own custom malware, rootkits, et cetera, et cetera. And like level one was like, run scanners, use COTS tools, take things off of GitHub that are publicly available, get to the gold, show the level of impact, and then everything up to there really leading towards, you know, trade craft, operational craft, commodities, blacksmithing of, of tooling, you know, yeah. what resources you can and can't use. Um, it, probably something worth revisiting, but I think that in, to, to your point, there's really no there's no yang to the yin part, right? Like there's there's no customer facing, at what level do I have to be to request a level three or a level four that maybe set, you know, and, and, and maybe the concept there is we start to use something like uh, MITRE ATT&CK and we say, hey, if you have, if you have technology, let's let's just be generic. If you have technology that can cover Every one of these phases, whether it's you know logs or firewalls or perimeter and EDR, and then you, you like put the magic decoder ring over it and you go, look, in every single one of these columns, I at least have one tool that I should be able to either stop or see with. Yeah. Maybe I'm ready for like a level four. Right. Um, maybe I'm ready for level three. I'm not gonna even give you level five because level five no. means that you're like, oh, I've gone through and iterated every single TTP and attack for the last two years and compensated for research decay in every single one of these tactics. And if you could say that, then like, okay, cool, let's do a five and like see what happens. And then yeah. if you miss it, then we're backing you off because there's a significant growth process that needed. But um, I think that there's need there. I think that there's need to make some kind of visualization of not only what is uh, different levels of test, but how do I select the right test for me? I think you have a great point. I think it's something, I mean, from a business owner, you know, you're, I mean, you're a business owner, let's face it, bloody successful one. If somebody came to you, which God forbid if they ever did, and said, hey, I want to give you an assessment. You want that bit of paper to go, well, here's where I think I am, and you're going to do this to me. Okay, actually, no, what I think I need is a pen test. What I think I need is actually, I got my shit together. I need a red team. Or actually, no, you know what? Just come in and give me a tabletop. I think we need to have a conversation before we even think about testing, before we even think about validating what I have, before we even think about actually breaking the shit that I think I've got running. I mean, to me, I don't, uh, to me, that's that hierarchy of maturity somewhere or other. I mean, it's, we got the maturity model stuff. I almost, I might take a stab at it. Um, it and I know Gabrielle is probably going to be like, hey, let's take a stab at this. I might do it. Because yeah, it's, I love it. Because I think it's some, and I because it's con it's going to be controversial. Let's face it, even inside our industry, because okay. you're right, okay. you're going to have so many people that go, "We've got a red team." No, you fucking have. You got a we bunch of people all the time. For God's sakes. Yeah. Uh, that, or the people that have a red team that is just like a bunch of people who do appsec testing, and you're like, "That's not that's not a red team." Yeah. Or we just do pen testing. That's also not a red team. Like, no. I, I think that that goes all the way back to my root of like, are you causing net positive improvement, and can you prove it? And if you can't, you're not a red team. Yeah. 
I wonder. I, I'm gonna. I might take a stab at this one. In all honesty, and then we can get um, all the hate mail, and I'll be like, oh, oh I love it. That's so much fun. <laughs> it's winter. It's great to burn. It's like my fireplace is right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I might take a bit. Yeah, we might take a bit of a stab at that one. I yeah, think. let's take a run at it. I'll help. I would love it. I actually would love it. It would be. Yeah, uh, seriously, that would be freaking awesome. Because the thing is needed, and I think it's needed because there's so much. I mean, we spent two hours on a Thursday night, Evan, Ryan, and I, two hours on a Thursday night just bitching about some of this shit and also giving some ways to fix a lot of this stuff. You know, it's not just, we do spend a bunch of time yelling and screaming about things, but then we'll spend a bunch of time going, look, here's, to, here's how you think about it, here's how you do it, all this kind of good stuff as well. Yeah. <sighs> All right, so I'm looking through. We got frameworks and all sorts of other stuff. All right, so we've hit red teaming, we've hit pen testing, we've hit what it is, what it isn't, all this kind of good stuff. Put the shoe on the other foot for a second. Here's something: business owner, large manufacturing, whatever you want to be. Take take a take a role model of whatever you want to be. Somebody comes to you and says, "Hey, you know, you've got you've got compliance regulatory stuff. How would you?" teach train how would you help the business owner ask the right questions of the nuts the numpties that are coming up saying hey we can test you we can do things what kind of things would you get that business owner to actually ask so that they do get a comfort level in in who's coming against them on what level of experience and stuff like that yeah yeah um i i think really the starting of and again I apologize because it's a crappy and it's an old resource because of its age, but it still still works. Um, if you can if you can go to the pen testing standard and you can yeah. say, show, show me on your sow where you're going to do this 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 and this, and then prove to me that you're going to do that in the deliverable. And if you don't, I will get X amount of dollars, if not all dollars, back. Almost every single firm out there that's a fraud firm will tap out. They will absolutely yeah. not agree to get to giving money back. They just won't do it. And and so you know our our you know money where your mouth is I think is where where it ends is it prove that through your cadence you're going to do these things. And I think to me um, when setting those out some of the goals that that i put in front of people when i say hey look go go to these testing firms i mean I, look i'm i'm on a number of boards and far be it for me i'm not allowed to go rec request or you know recommend that they chris you're breaking up a little bit just a heads up chris you're breaking up uh oh come back Am I the only one that's seen the breakup? Let me know. Um, I don't think it's on my end. Let me just double check my end. Dum -dum -dum. Uh, everybody just hold for a sec while we see if we got Chris. What's going on? Let me just make sure it's not on my end. Nope, I think I'm in good shape on this neck of the woods. Chris is up. Oh, hang on. Things are, things like that. Sorry, yeah. is it breaking up? Yeah, totally. You broke up really badly. Sorry. Like I lost you for about 20, 30 seconds. Breckenridge Internet. All right, so goal-oriented testing. Um, yep. I think I think one of the things there is don't just go get access. Prove that you could do something with it because I might have a system in place where, you know, of course, you can go get DA, but once you start logging into stuff with those DA credentials, I'm going to smoke you. And and then you go, oh, I got DA. I could do anything I want. And you're like, yeah, but we kicked you out. And then you didn't get back in. So good luck with your story. So I think the goals are one thing, right? Don't just say access or privilege is the goal, access is the goal. So I need to access, you know, if I'm a manufacturer, the CAD drawings that I'm, I'm pushing to the, the line, traverse the boundary from IT to OT. You know, all of those things are direct impacts to the business that we can quantify in some type of calculation, whether it's, you know, fair or whether we're doing, you know, all the way down to loss of life or whatever that is. You know, I, I think that those are important goals for the test. I think also being able to understand how they are going to feedback tactics that they use. So will you be able to give me a tactic by tactic approach of everything that you did and tell me which one of my tools inside of the tool set I should be able to see this in or 
you're using some magic technique that no one's ever heard of because you're God's gift to hacking, AKA you found some <laughs> script on exploit hub that you didn't know how that it worked and just hoped that it, that it popped a shell. Yeah. Um, so, but, but I think that, that reverse engineering what you want out of the report is really important upfront. It's, 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 you need to know what you're getting and you need to anticipate how that's going to be produced for you. And I think that the more of those commitments that you get, the easier it is from a contract management standpoint to say, look, I bought this, you gave me this, they're not the same thing. No money. Yeah. And no, trust me, no money is a big deal. <laughs> Here's the thing though, and absolutely not disagreeing. If we're gonna do that, we also need to reset expectations because and we just went on to one of these, just got dragged into something where they're like, hey, we need an assessment. Um, we need it done in a week. And I'm like, well, that's nice for you. You know, and that's, and <laughs> have a nice day. Good luck. I mean, go literally go get one of the, go get one of the puppy mills to do it for you. Um, Cause that's uh, so all you're gonna get in a week. And that I think part of that is tradecraft. Part of that's gonna be the communication yes. stuff. Yeah. But I think that's also, we've got to help reset those expectations like, hey, Doing this properly takes time. Collaborating with you and getting you on a conference call is gonna take time. Working mm -hmm. with your teams, all this stuff. This isn't just a, hey, I can get a pen test quickly done in 10, 20,000. This is something that number one is gonna take time. And number two, by the way, when I've done this, what are you doing for the other 300 and something on days of the year? How, <laughs> I mean, right. let's talk about that for a second. This is something I know that's a hot button for you is the whole concept of continuous and all this stuff yeah. improvements. Yeah, I you know the uh, the 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 testing idea of tick the box, right? Just like you said, uh, is are you concerned with security tomorrow? Are you concerned with security yesterday? Or are you concerned with concer security in one second? And if you're security with security in one second, then a non-variable measurement is great for you. As long as you're not concerned with security, the one second after that, as, as long as you can just admit that openly and you can say, I am only concerned about security for one second, otherwise I really don't give a shit. If, if you say that and you're honest about it, non-variable ratings are perfect for you. They're, they're your jam. That's exactly where you should go. You should spend zero else dollars. But if you are concerned with any amount of time of security other than one single point of time, you have to have variable ratings. It's like saying, am I concerned about my website being up? Yes. And PS, not just one point in time because the website is how I make money. So I have to be concerned with every single second and I have to measure every single second, which brings us all the way back to this whole performance engineering thing. Security is a pressure gauge. You have to constantly be able to measure it. And if you don't, you have a post measurement and the engine could be blowing up and you have no idea whatsoever. And, and I think that, you know, to the level of expectations to, to wrap back to the beginning of what you were saying, um, you know, the, the K hey, you can do it in one week. Uh, you know, I think more people need to be blunt. And, and, and this is the thing that creates the ambulance chasing market is you and I get on a call with them. We both give them the same answer being two different vendors. Look in a week, the best I could do is go in and blow up the building. Everyone's going to die. You're going to lose everything in the company. Like it's going to be total pandemonium. And I am not going to have enough time at the end to even tell you how to fix it. But if you want to collaborate, yeah. here's what it's going to take. So if, yeah. if that's an answer that doesn't fit for you, you need to go to somewhere else. And then the ambulance chaser goes, well, I'll run Nessus for a thousand dollars and charge you 20 grand. <laughs> And then they go, yeah. but I'll tell you how to fix everything because it's auto-populated in essence. It's auto-populated, yeah, exactly. Like, Good luck on that. But, but you're like, yeah. but really? But is it? You know, yeah. at some point, is that Nessus control the, you know, how do I stop this exploit in flight with my EDR and detect my, that it yeah, alerts yeah. to somebody and gives it to them at the right time and makes it actionable, and then they actually go do it? Like, uh, no, 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 it doesn't do that. It just shows you red, yellow, green, you know, like, and you're like mm, maybe I should just buy that myself. Yeah, save the freaking money and actually maybe learn something. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, whatever. I mean, you know, you can also just do free testing, you know, go to like, go to Reddit and be like, bet nobody can hack my company. And I mean, it's, you'll probably get a better test than you'll get from the commodity pen testers. You won't cost you anything. I and mean, you just, you need a free incident response. You just like, 
open it up pretty much <laughs> Given what Reddit's managed to do to the markets at the moment, they yeah. seem to be getting that shit together. I'm like, oh, yeah, hell most, yeah. Dude, oh. most proficient consulting firm in the world. <laughs> it seems to be at the moment. Oh, although, the, I mean, you think about it. I mean, you've got, so, I mean, this gets into a little edgy side of the conversations. You've got a couple, you've got a number of companies out there who will do that. I mean, it's it's the crowdsourcing pen test, or I'm really yeah. crowdsourcing pen test. It's a crowdsourcing assessment within confines and rules and reg, whatever the heck you want to sure. call it. It's a crowdsourcing yeah. target practice. Oh, there we go. It's crowdsourcing yeah. target practice. There you go. I, yeah. I know the bug bounty people get really, uh, really steeped and angry when I say bug bounties are um, pretty much just walking into a bar with a buck knife and asking for heart surgery. <laughs> It can be a little bit that way. Yeah. I, <laughs> and then yeah. Like, it's not like that. And you're like, yeah, but isn't it? <laughs> I mean, yeah. anyone in the bar can probably perform surgery. It just might not be good. <laughs> might not be what you kind of want on that one. Yeah. Be, be, what's, uh, yeah. Be careful what you ask for. There's a proper saying around that somewhere. I don't know what the heck yeah. it is off the top of my head. All right. So I want to go on the other side for a sec. Flip channels completely for a second. Um, I've been breached. Somebody got after me. Somebody <laughs> got in. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Yeah. <laughs> or I just don't know about it at the moment, which is why my computer's running wonky every now and again. Anyway, right. I find out that somebody's breached me after putting the hatchet in the computer here and looking in the mirror going, what could I have fixed? I want to take that hatchet out and I want to go chasing after them. It's just it's the Scottish part of me coming out. Talk yeah. to me about your thoughts on that. I'm just, I want to hear what your thoughts are on that whole thing. Um. God, my opinion's so unpopular, uh, and and I'll just and I'll just say that, and you know, guess what? Haters, totally fine. I get yeah, really, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm used to it. Um, <laughs> I just I just have to roundly say, like, if you are not capable of protecting your computer in the first part, like, you're not capable of taking the hatchet to someone else. Like, you just don't have the skill. Like, if you walked into the bar and got knocked out, you don't have the skills to go fight. Like, it's just you just don't. And, and I think that we need to be honest and realistic with ourselves that, that we, we can't be constantly trying to, to use these, you know, legacy techniques of, you know, grog caveman smash. It's the most inelegant solution that, that I think we should, we should almost, we should, we should almost be offended by people thinking that way. It's, it's not civilized. It's not appropriate. It does not fit the rules of warfare and, and it, we figured that out we're going to figure it out even more in the cyberspace but you know geneva got real clear when they were like use the bomb that was too big everybody high five and say we're not going to do that again because we're too dumb as a species to not kill ourselves so like all of you monkey shake and make sure that no one uses the big thing just throw bananas at each other because we can recover from that like yeah Guess what? Cyber world is a direct one for one replication of the real world. And the day that you go one step over, cyber becomes kinetic and you're not prepared for that. I do not believe that people are prepared. Even if they get lucky hacking back, I don't know if they're prepared for that person to go, cool, well, if you want to stop playing computer games, I'll just bring this package into your office and vaporize it. And then they'll go, ha ha, I win, score one for me. And then what are you going to do? You know, like, are, are you prepared for that? And maybe, maybe you are, maybe in some points you're actually ready for kinetic threats. Um, and at that point, okay, well, do, do you want, do you want to play world police? Well, that's, I mean, that's the other big part of it. I mean, that's, I mean, how many of the adversarial attacks that we see, especially the really sophisticated ones, are coming from within. I mean, they might use a couple of servers inside our own country. Right. But I mean, at that pass, you're lobbing digital grenades into a foreign country. I mean, talk at about Russia, me. like people oh, yeah. with yeah, troops and ones. bombs yeah. and like badass spies. Big ones. Big ones. Yeah. yeah. We're not just you know. now going to throw rocks at you. They, they, they got some really nasty stuff. Right. And I'm in an apartment, you know, and I'm like, uh, well, I, I mean, I hope nobody comes in. <laughs> Well, this is, I think this, this to me is, uh, and Ryan says it really, really well. Uh, uh, Ryan's got a, a great way. It's, it's the, it's the analog human in the digital world. It yeah. feels, it very much so feels like mentally we're still at high noon. 
you piss me off, we are both going out into, into the middle of the street. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and right. that's, I can see you. I know who you are. You offended me. It, it, to me, it, it's the same thing with uh, in the English. It, it's, you know, I, I mean, smack you upside with a thumb. But the, the, we but the sad part is that there's no, the, the internet removes the boundary of, of respect and the societal construct of the duel, right? Like, like duels did have a sense of theater to them. And at the end of the day, lots of times people intentionally missed because they needed to prove the point. And there was yeah. a level of forgiveness that, that happened inside of that, that, that doesn't exist in cyberspace at all, right? Like cyberspace is all about like, I'll, I'll, I'll murder your grandmother and it doesn't matter because I don't know who you are and I don't care. And, yeah. and I don't have to look you in the eye and feel bad afterwards. Oh, I always look at it. So for me, again, same thing, getting dropped out of military airplanes and all sorts of other stupid shit. When somebody was shooting me, more often than not, I kind of knew who it was or I knew the general direction it was coming from. So either I could get them or you bring in a freaking flying titanium bathtub and that deals with the situation. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Much easier that way. Yeah. Nowadays, I have no clue who's shooting at me. Not only do I have no clue who's shooting at me, we're all using the same poor Korean, North Korean grandma's computer <laughs> to pivot on to be able to do that. And that's my concern on this one is we're all chasing with our fire axes, basically ghosts. And I don't think we've figured that one out yet. Well, I mean, I think when, when we were talking about this a little earlier, the, the you know, the question of, of, you know, can I hack back and, and how, and, and you know what? Why can't I go attack the person that's attacking me? Like you're getting you know punched in the face by somebody in front of you. And and you know my my luddite kind of generic analogy to that is is that you know if it's raining and your roof is leaking, do you attack the sky or do you fix the leaking roof? And guess what? Attacking the sky is going to yield you nothing every single time. Yeah. So, so what are you going to do? Are you, are you going to be a victim of your own circumstance or are you going to fix the stuff that's in your control? Well, this is, I think this is one of those things that seems really, really hard for humans to do. And especially at the moment, they have been affronted. They have been, you know, somebody has come up and smacked them with the oh, gloves yeah. across the face. How dare you? Exactly. But there's nobody <laughs> for them to go back against. They literally right. have to look in the mirror. Yeah, they, uh, that's and, right. That's right. As humans, we're not good at that. And as companies, we're even, we, it feels oh, like we're even worse at doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Because, <laughs> because I think, I think the part inside of that um, is, I don't know, I had, I had this really, really long philosophical discussion about this, um, about permission and, and about corporate permission and how um, we, because of how we have mistrained the stock market we have not allowed companies to give themselves the permission to fail and resolve it. So, so now we have a market that we know is directly reflective, which means we cannot expose those things because we do not have the permission to evolve. We only have the permission to stay exactly where we were, right? Because by having the permission to evolve, we would have to show that certain failures occur and those learning lessons were institutionalized and that created growth, right? You know, just to my old college teachers, right? Like you only learn when you fail or when you're wrong, you never learn any other way, right? You cannot learn net new. You have to have a moment where you were incorrect and the unknown exists. And we don't have permission of that because the market holds those companies so accountable for those particular instances. Of, of loss or compromise that, that we've actually created the, you know, the you know, self-eating apple that just chose to not eat itself anymore because it's not allowed to. That's interesting. And you're right on that one. I mean, we see it so often the market penalizes. I mean, the market seems to be ruling and dictating and penalizing and absolutely right. It gets dragged into it as well. Again, let's face it. I mean, it, it's, it's interesting to see how that works. You're right. I can't fail. I, right. I'm, I'm not allowed to fail, which is, which again is another one of those things that again in the industry, I get my ass handed to me. I've got, you know, the proverbial digital acts buried in my computer. The right. very first thing, honestly, I want to be able to do is put my hand up and talk to my neighbors around me and go, yes, shit's just yes. happened. This is what I had. This is how I think they got in. 
do me a favor, go figure that shit out quickly before they get into every single one of you. Yep. But the market won't allow me to do it. The lawyers won't allow me to do it. And at that point in time, the only time you find out that the, I got the ax in me is when eventually maybe I kind of have to possibly do something about putting it in a public domain ish. Right. And right. meanwhile, all of my friends around me got their ass handed to them as well. And what's, and, and what's the conversation that you have to have at the executive level every time? The last conversation that you have to have is, is it so bad that we have to disclose it? Yeah. Not, not like, oh man, we should disclose this so that nobody else gets hit. Like if there's, if there's a burglar in your neighborhood, it's not, it's not like, well, don't tell anyone. I don't want them to know that we got burgled. It's like, go tell all your neighbors and be on the lookout and band together and like be better societally. And I think that, you know, we've just, we've just fallen into the security money trap instead of, instead of really using that as a springboard of progress, it's, it, it's, it, it really regresses the environments and what we can do. I have to, I've got to give credit for the latest shenanigans that happened well, end of last year, which is when one of our industry put their hand up and said, look, shit's just happened. We're working it out. Yep. We don't have all the details. Here's yep. what we think went missing. Here's how you can protect yourself. Yeah. I have to give him credit for that Class one. You know, one. Class yeah. act. Class act. Yeah, I was actually really impressed. And that's the, f I want to say that's the first time I've seen something like that happen in a long, long time. Yeah. You know, I think even, um, you know, like Cloudflare under Joe and some other people, I, I think there's, I think there's been a, a really great troop of, of people in the tech community that have embraced a, dialogue around compromise in such a technical fashion that that it is so enriching that it was something that made me think that is not just a company that's going to stay around but it's a company that I want to be part of in some way yeah. um, and I and I think that that again we have to untrain people right like we we got we barked for help for so long that eventually the news heard the narrative of like, oh my God, hackers. And then then they were just like, every night they were like, oh my God, hackers doing bad things. And then they like forgot yeah. about all the really cool stuff and the really good stuff that happened. It just became nothing but, you know, explosions and sky is falling and doom and apocalypse. And it's like, give me, give me a, give me something good. And and I and I feel like some of these people who have disclosed in in like a really enriched fashion of the way that their teams work together and the learning lessons that they had and like all these technical things that they found about the environment like that's a book i want to read and maybe i'm just you know it's just because i'm in the profession that i'm in but i but i feel like there's so much to learn from that you know we we all at some point in time have read like a tom clancy book right yeah. and the yeah. reason is because shit goes really wrong but you you see every little detail of how the solution sort of weaves and gets put together and at the end all of those things that went wrong are acted on and learned and and that learning experience gives you an emotional connection and if you know if i say it a million times i'll say it a million more security is a feeling and you want to feel good you yeah. got to go through the motions and and i think that you know those are things that make me personally feel good i know that we got to probably retrain the analysts, retrain the investors, retrain the market makers to be like, yo, if this person releases a breach and doesn't give any information about it, but they're like, whatever, we got it handled. We just wanted to let you know, you know, that y'all got hacked. Here's a free Experian credit monitoring. Like <laughs> definitely, you can... definitely start taking your money out. If, yeah. if they're like, here's here's like you know a github repo that has every team's work effort of all the crazy stuff that they were doing like ps those people are going to make it because they know how to solve problems yeah exactly yeah i have huge difference yeah huge difference no i like that again to me use evan stuff it's accountability it is it comes down to that and it's the neighborly it's the it's bringing the human side of it back into it again mm -hmm. which we seem to have missed a lot of definitely yeah i think that's that's uh that's that's a mantra we all need right is is br bring the human back yeah um, I, I think i think we we have been reminded it over and over again throughout all the pandemic stuff is that you know at, at the end of the day we can put as many systems and as many ai whiz bang blob algorithms in between us 
Uh, and, and the thing at the end of the day that gives you the level of faith or the level of trust or the level of hope is the human. It's not, it's not the machine. Noting from uh, Craig just said one of the game developing companies just got their ass handed to them as well. And they said immediately went public. They said they're not paying, publish whatever they want, do whatever you want. We're not engaging. And it's like, wow, okay. And hopefully they'll learn from them. Like, that to me is like, yeah, you know. And again, it's that learn from it. And again, it's learn from it continuously. You know, we're all going to get our yeah. asses handed to us at some point in time. What the absolutely. hell are you going to be prepared for it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I mean, I, I, I don't I don't think I'm ever going to be at a point where you know I'm going to say you can't do this or can't do that. I mean look at look at all of the times that we've been at Defcon and somebody brought the unhackable machine in like 2 minutes you know somebody kicked it down a flight of stairs and pulled an EEPROM off of it and they're like here's all your passwords you know and they're like they're like no we meant hack it and they're like here's passwords what's up you know like, exactly yeah that's what we what got did in. I do wrong but, oh, but you know, I, I think I think that you can always work hard in it, right? You can work hard in the steel. You can always fold it, bang it together, and make it harder. And I think that that's not going to just come from casting it. It's going to come from constantly working it and constantly getting to a point of, of you know, layering and and being able to to prove it, right? You just got to be able to prove some of these things instead of just just in theory, because our our world is disproving those theories a lot now. And then, you know, you have other people who are just disproving stuff for the sake of being contrarian. And whether, what, I mean, you know, maybe maybe that's what it distills down to, right? The hackers that are out there are just the contrarians that want to fight for the sake of arguing. Like debate right. club, they're doing it with packets. Yeah, pretty much. You know, and whether they have malicious know. intent or not, it's still the same thing. It's still the same thing, exactly. All right, we're hitting the top of the hour. This has been, yeah, this has been freaking awesome just getting to hang out with you for a bit. Uh, it's been it's been I long you. overdue. Like yeah, state, and I never even get to see you. So such I a blessing know. to just be able to chat and, and just go get through to some hang of out. Stuff, it's freaking man. awesome. Yeah. All right. Any final thoughts for everybody that's hanging out or any of this stuff? Give me some final thoughts. What are you guys up to at the moment? Yeah. You know, I think more and more we're we're like I said, we're focusing on net positive improvement. Um, if if I can do one task. I want to be able to prove that we can we can do something about that, you know. Um, I think custom tailor is is the way we all need to go. Uh, you know, I've I've been one of those people that have always worn you know a generic like oh it's an extra large, and, and I'll tell you there is a big difference between one company's extra large and another company's extra large, and me being a fairly big man. Um, you know, like a French extra large is real different than American extra large. <laughs> Uh, yeah. But 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 I think just thinking about that, um, one of the things that we have found that that I can say uh, through the last let's say four or five years of of doing those TTP iterations, a la MITRE versus attack chains and stuff like that, is less. And I'm going to say this out loud: less, and we have evidence to prove less than 50% of the techniques that the products say that they catch less than 50% actually work out of the box. So for everyone who has bought their way into security without tuning, I'm positive and I will bet you just about any of some that less than 50% are really actually working. Now they have the capabilities to do it, but out of the box, less than 50. So moral of the story is you can't buy your way there. Yeah. I love it. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. man. It's always a pleasure. Same thing. An absolute yep. honor and a pleasure. Much appreciated. You take care. Say hi to the young lady. You too. All right. Cheers. Thank you. So. Thanks to everybody joining us. Bye -bye, take care, everybody. Stop this down quick. All right, man. I will see you later. I will you do. Good? Take care, brother. You anything love else? You, brother. No, I'm good. You take care. All right. Cheers. Bye-bye.